Ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm the mama, and I think it's gotta be a boy. What's going on? It's your boy Sosa. I'm the I'm the daddy. I'm ten girl. You feel me? Ten girl. It's a girl. I already know it, man. You feel me? This is the story of Jasmine Cooper, a vibrant 27-year-old woman full of life, dreams, and hopes. She was 38 weeks pregnant, eagerly awaiting the arrival of her child. And Kayshawn Williams, 29, the man who was supposed to be by her side, now stands accused of the unthinkable. Welcome to Crime Corner. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Greenville, a quiet city in the heart of North Carolina, known for its picturesque landscapes and tight-knit communities. But on that fateful morning, this peaceful town would become the backdrop for a horrifying crime that sent shockwaves through its streets. Now, let's get to know the victim of this heart-wrenching tale. Jasmine Cooper is a 27-year-old woman with a vibrant spirit and dreams as big as the southern sky. This car drives smooth in a mug like... I don't know how to act like your girl be speeding and bumping and driving so smoothly. I feel like I'm flying in this car. Like, I don't know how to act. I feel like I'm flying. Jasmine was not just any ordinary person. She was the heart of her community. In the sad story of Jasmine Cooper and the person accused of killing her, Kayshawn Williams, it's really important to understand their relationship. We can get some insights into their lives through what they post on social media. 27-year-old Jasmine Cooper was 38 weeks pregnant and engaged to 29-year-old Kayshawn Cooper, who was a truck driver. Everybody say they want to drive trucks, man. I ain't gonna lie, boy. This ain't for the week. Speaking of week, I've been out here about two weeks. Fiance at home, and she pregnant, y'all. Pregnant, so we expecting. Picking up my load right now. Mind you, I'm from North Carolina, right? I live in North Carolina. I'm currently now in Charlotte, North Carolina. About three, about three and a half hours away from home going west. No, no, not west, going east. My dispatch sent me a load that's going back to Illinois. I live in North Carolina. They had been together for a while, and it looked like they were in love from their online photos. The two were expecting a baby. Y'all, I don't know how I'm gonna make it. But I'm gonna make it. This girl eat everything, bro. So as far y'all know, man, my fiance pregnant. It's not like she been pregnant for forever now, but bro. I get woke up three in the morning, two in the morning, twelve in the afternoon. This girl is just a munch, bro. Just eat everything, man. Like, look at it in the car. Ready to get something to eat now. Look, what you doing on her phone, y'all? I know. I don't know. Looking at some damn restaurants, bro. But yeah, man, it's a beautiful day. Hot. It's hot down here in North Carolina, man. They can go to Corral. Look, she's trying to show me something. You want what? What's that? Yeah. So this one, yeah. Is it about food? No. It's just thing. Get away with having a sneaky link. Get away with what? Having a sneaky link. Come watch it. What the hell you want to try that for? You get points from that. You gotta watch the video. I'm gonna have to put a bandy over this hand. You probably will win. Nah. -uh. <laughs> but there were hints that things might not have been great behind the scenes. Some friends and family mentioned that there were moments when their relationship seemed rocky, even though no one had officially reported any abuse before this terrible incident. Despite these hints, their social media posts made them seem like a happy couple, showing their love for each other. Baby took okay. me to build a bear so, for my birthday. Okay. 
Baby Teddy need to go build a bear. I'm excited. But sadly, as we've seen, social media can hide painful truths. The surprising twist in this story has left the community puzzled, and the police are determined to find out what really happened. As we dig deeper into their relationship, we'll try to answer the lingering questions and figure out what led to such a heartbreaking loss. According to what was shared on social media, Jasmine Cooper had plans to name her unborn daughter Kiani, but both passed away tragically. On July 9th, just before 10 in the morning, the police received a distress call from apartment 302 at the Heritage at Arlington Apartments on West Arlington Boulevard. The call was about a woman named Jasmine Cooper, who was 38 weeks pregnant and unresponsive. The police rushed to the scene and took Jasmine to ECU Health Medical Center, but despite all efforts, both Jasmine and her baby did not survive. It's really heartbreaking. The Pitt County Medical Examiner's Office conducted an autopsy on Friday, and their findings were devastating. They concluded that Jasmine's death was a homicide caused by severe head injuries and strangulation. Chief Sauls, who is overseeing the case, mentioned that when they found Jasmine, they immediately tried to save the baby's life through emergency procedures. But sadly, it seems that the baby's injuries were connected to Jasmine's injuries, and they couldn't save her either. This is a truly tragic and heartbreaking situation. Based on the evidence gathered by the police, they arrested Jasmine Cooper's boyfriend, a 29-year-old guy named Kayshawn Williams. It turns out detectives found enough evidence that pointed to him as the suspect in this tragic case. His arrest happened shortly after 11 a.m. on a Saturday at a house in the 1100 block of Eagle Chase Lane in Pitt County. But here's the really intense part, it wasn't an easy arrest. There was a brief standoff with the Greenville Police Department Emergency Response Team and the Violent Criminal Apprehension Team. So, about six days after Jasmine's passing, on July 15th, they finally managed to arrest Kayshawn Williams after a two-hour standoff at a relative's house. It's a heavy situation. He's been charged with not only Jasmine's murder, but also the murder of her unborn baby. Police arrested a man today following a standoff and charged him with killing his girlfriend and her unborn child. Greenville Police, a 29-year-old Kayshawn Williams, was arrested just after 11 a.m. today at a home in the 1100 block of Eagle Chase Lane after a brief standoff with police. Williams is charged with the murder of his girlfriend, 27-year-old Jasmine Cooper, as well as her unborn child. Officers tell WI-10 that it's believed that the child was Williams's. Officers went to an apartment on West Arlington Boulevard back on July 9th, just before 10 a.m. for a report of an unresponsive woman. Cooper, who police said was 38 weeks pregnant, was taken to ECU Health Medical Center, where she and her unborn baby girl died. Police said an autopsy revealed the woman died as a result of blunt force trauma to the head and strangulation. Williams is in the Pitt County Detention Center under no bond. Chief Sauls, who's handling the case, mentioned that this domestic violence situation is different from most because there weren't any prior incidents or warning signs that they knew of. It's a stark reminder that sometimes, these things can happen without any visible red flags. Chief Sauls also wants to remind everyone in the community that if you ever see something that doesn't seem right, you should say something. You might be the voice for someone who's afraid to speak up. Even if you don't want to get involved or share your name, providing information about what someone else might be going through is crucial. It's about looking out for one another and making sure no one suffers in silence. Kayshawn Williams is facing some serious charges. He's been charged with two counts, one for the murder of Jasmine Cooper and another for the murder of her unborn child. He's in the Pitt County Detention Center right now, and they haven't set a bond for his release. As for when he'll have to appear in court, well, that hasn't been decided yet. So, for the time being, he's in custody, waiting for the legal process to unfold. What happened to Jasmine Cooper is truly heartbreaking and should never have occurred. The loss of a young woman and her unborn child is a tragedy that has left the entire community in shock and sorrow. It's a strong reminder of how important it is to notice and deal with domestic abuse and all the harm it can cause. Preventing such heart-wrenching tragedies is a tough challenge, requiring both awareness and decisive action. In Jasmine's case, it's even more troubling because there weren't any clear warning signs of domestic violence beforehand. This fact makes it all the more essential for us to be aware of the signs of abusive relationships and to speak up if we ever suspect something is wrong in someone's life. The impact of this tragedy on Jasmine's family and loved ones cannot be understated. 
Losing a family member or a close friend in such circumstances is emotionally devastating. The pain they must be feeling from losing both Jasmine and her unborn child is beyond words. It's crucial for them to lean on the support of friends, family, and professionals during this incredibly challenging time. Grief, anger, and confusion are all emotions they may grapple with, and seeking help is crucial in healing. This tragic incident reminds us that domestic violence can affect anyone, and it often unfolds behind closed doors, hidden from public view. It's our collective responsibility to keep raising awareness about domestic violence, offer resources to those who might be at risk, and urge individuals to report any suspicions they have, even if they're unsure or hesitant. In the end, the loss of Jasmine Cooper and her unborn child is an utterly heart-wrenching outcome of a terrible situation. It emphasizes the need for constant vigilance, compassion, and support for those who might be silently suffering. It calls upon our community to work together tirelessly to prevent such devastating incidents from happening in the future. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.